once again, welcome to Honeyville. Let's take a moment and let's, let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence all around us and in our lives. Father, we uh, invite you to have your will and your way in this service today. And Lord, I pray that that would be the prayer of each one of our hearts. That you would have your will and your way in our lives. Lord, we ask you to be with all those that are traveling and, and camping in isolated locations. And we ask you to be with each one of us. Keep us close to you all the time. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now for our announcements. And that concludes our announcements. Let's worship the Lord. So good to see you all here. Let's stand together and sing.
You know, there's times that we feel like we need a Savior and that we are not at the point of coming to him because he is so great. But we can come to him no matter what. He's waiting. He's right beside us. And he loves us. No matter what we've done,
everyone to think of a situation or person that is on your heart and just take a few moments right now to pray for that situation for God to be in it and pray for that person that God will move in a mighty way in your life. So just take a moment just to pray. We just thank you and praise you for all you're doing in our lives and the people around us, Lord, in this world. Lord, we lift up all these requests, and I know that you have heard them all, and you've already began working in that situation, in that person. Um, Lord, we trust you. We lean on you because we don't understand a lot of things, God. But we know we can trust you too and that you're in control. So, Heavenly Father, we lift it up to you. We ask for your will to be done, your kingdom to come. In Jesus' precious, precious name, amen. Praise God. Well, kids, I love to do experiments and things that draw us closer to the Lord. And today, boys and girls, we're going to do something a little special. I want to talk to you a little bit about popcorn. Now, popcorn is one of America's favorite and maybe it's your favorite snack. A long time ago, um, in American history, 
um, popcorn was way back discovered when the pilgrims left the corn out by the fire and noticed that it popped up this really cool, white, fluffy, yummy goodness. And we have salt. Now salt is something um, that actually came up in um, 6,000 BC. And it was discovered because it was down in the sea. Someone noticed that the sea was a little bit salty and wondered why. And when they boiled it down, it left a residue. And it was salty and it tasted salty. And see, they came up with fire and started making food. And uh, they needed to, as time goes by, not only flavor the food, but preserve the food. So they used salt, okay? So those are the two things that we're gonna use today in our experiment. And do you know that God calls us in this world, but not of it? And in John 17, verses 14 through 17, that's what it says, that we are not of this world. We are not of this world. And my prayer is not that God takes us out of this world, but that he protects us from the evil one, purifies us, and separates us, and makes us holy by the truth. And the truth is found in God's word. And so, the example. what we're supposed to do today in this crazy mixed up world that we're in to come out and not be in the world well be in the world but not of it amen, amen. all right god bless you dear jesus i ask you to be with each boy and girl that's either here or listening father bless them lord Help them to be an example to others around and trust you in all things. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God. Well, good morning once again. Good morning. Good morning. Glad you're all here. I was wondering how the Canadians feel about popcorn. Love it. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> just came to mind. I know the Americans like it. I just wonder how the Canadians like it. Yes, I know I said it in Americans. <laughs> okay. Lord, please help us. Please help me. And I thank you, Father, for your presence here in our lives and all the time. In Jesus' name. Let your word go forth to those who would hear your voice today. We thank you, amen. Yeah. So I'm going to be in the book of John in chapter 5. Some of you might recognize this account. It's entitled, Jesus Heals a Lame Man. 
John chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem. Now, you may be already wondering, it may have already occurred to you, that if this is afterward, something must have happened beforeward. So go back and check that out for yourself in John 4, and maybe even further back, and see what was going on up till this point, because now, afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the Sheep Gate was a pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men that was lying there had been sick for 38 years. That's a long time. 38 years he'd been lying there. And when Jesus saw him and knew how long he had been ill, get that? When Jesus saw him and knew, because he is the Son of God, how long this had been going on, he asked him, would you like to get well? It's a legitimate question. Been laying there for 38 years. Would you like to get well? Well, I can't, sir, the sick man said. For I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am trying to get there, someone else always gets in ahead of me. But Jesus told him, Stand up, pick up your sleeping mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. And he rolled up the mat and began walking. Forget this part. This miracle happened on the Sabbath day. So the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, You can't work on the Sabbath. It's illegal to carry that sleeping mat. He replied, The man who healed me said to me, Pick up your sleeping mat and walk. Well, who said such a thing as that, they demanded. Well, the man didn't know. He didn't know who it was. For, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. But afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, Now you are well, so stop sinning or something even worse may happen to you. Then, the man went to find the Jewish leaders and told them what, that it was Jesus who had healed him. That would be, in my opinion, first mistake. This man is Jesus, Son of God. Just healed you. You've been laying by a pool for 38 years. Can't walk. 38 years. And this man comes up to you on a Sunday or on a Sabbath and, 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 and says, do you want to be healed? Now i got to do this because in my mind, and I don't think the way God thinks a lot of the time, but in my mind, he's probably kind of whiny. Well, of course I want to be healed, but every time I get up, somebody else gets in front of me, and I never get to get in the water. That's just the way I see this. Right? And Jesus didn't pick on him for this. He just says, okay, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. You're healed. Instantly he's healed. Then what does the guy do? As soon as he finds out it was Jesus, he goes and writes him out. Right after Jesus told him, stop sinning or something else, even worse might happen to you. Now right there, I just need to make the point that sometimes it is our sin that causes things like this to happen to us. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it, it, it is just a situation around us. It, it's, I believe everything is part of God's plan. But sometimes, and we don't like to think about this, it is our sin that gets us hurt. And that's why God wants to keep us out of that sin and keep us from evil so that we aren't getting hurt unnecessarily. So in all of that, I've already covered several points that I wasn't going to at all and didn't in the first service. However, the point today is this. Jesus asked this man, do you want to be healed? I believe God would ask us today, and everybody that's listening in here, and welcome everybody that's on Facebook, YouTube, wherever it is you're watching, and whatever day it is that you're watching. I believe that God would ask you and me today, 
do you want to get well? Now, when I, I, I did this message several years ago, and it came from an angle of, do you really want to get well? I, and, and I thought about myself, because how many of you actually think about yourself <laughs> and can admit it? <laughs> well, it's all about me. We did a study a few years ago that told us it wasn't all about us, remember? Yeah, we need to be reminded of that. So I, I put it in terms where, all right, well, my physical condition, do I really want it to get better? I have an issue with my back, that's as far as I'm going to say on that, but I have learned in a lifetime how to manage it, it's controlled for the most part, and I know what to expect, what it's like, when things get bad, I know it's going to get better again because we've been through this over and over, and I can just handle it. So I had asked myself a while back, do I really want to get well from that? My answer, I don't know. My, my father used to get so impatient with me. That was my answer to everything when I was a kid. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that would irritate him. So my answer to God in this, do I want to be healed from that? I don't know. That's an honest answer. I don't know. But what I do want to be healed from, and I believe what God would have us look at today, is do you want to get well? Is there something that's separating you or holding you back from your relationship with the Lord or from serving Him or from walking full-blown into ministry the way that He would call you to do? And I don't mean just, you know, okay, i got to quit my job now and walk away. Hey, Mom, Dad, I don't have to go to school no more because I'm going to be a missionary starting now. No, that's not what I'm saying. But every one of us has a ministry. Every one of us had, was created for a purpose. And are you walking in that fully? Or is there something that's holding you back? Is there something in your life that you know gets in the way between you and God? Or are you sitting there going, no, nope, ain't nothing wrong here, I'm good. That would be the first place that God would want to work with you on. If you think that you're all that in a bag of chips, I know that was, what, at least two years ago that phrase was popular. But uh, if you think that, that would be the first place God would want to work with you on. And secondly, if you can get past that, and most of us can, what is it that you would have me work on? And remember that when we look at things just with our own human understanding, we're probably going to miss something. Because over in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9, this is the word of the Lord. And he says, my thoughts are completely different from yours. Completely different. And my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. So if you sit there all day today and you imagine with all your might and all your, your brain power and all your creativity what God is like and what his ways are like, you're not even going to be, it doesn't matter how awesome you can imagine it, we aren't going to be able to come close. And that's something I, need, I think we need to accept right there and accept that God is God. Let him be God. And now begin to, once again, hopefully, allow him to mold us and shape us to be more like him so that our thoughts can become more in line with his. Because that is possible. But when we try and just figure all this out on our own, we're apt to miss something. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So is there something that God wants to do in you today to make you well? That maybe you either have ignored or you have... Uh, Existed a change, or maybe you don't even realize it. Because I think that's where a lot of us are. There's just little subtle things, sometimes big things that aren't so subtle, but we still don't catch it. We don't see it, that this is something, and I'm speaking in very vague terms today. I'm not going to put any, um, I'm not going to name any names today. I'm not going to give you any specific things. Because see, I believe that if you stop 
take just a moment that God will point out to you and not in a way, and this isn't a thing where it's like, okay, I know there's something wrong with you that needs to be fixed, so you just need to go find out what it is to fix it. I know that it just occurred to me that's the way this is sounding coming out. But how about if it's just that God wants to steer you more on that path that you're supposed to be on? How about he wants to give you peace that passes all human understanding? How about he wants to give you joy in the face of adversity? How about he wants to give you confidence and boldness when it doesn't make any sense or when you really need it the most? How about he wants you to smell the smells and see the colors and, and hear the sounds that, 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 that just heighten all of it? How about he wants to heighten your senses? To see him, to see his creativity. Do you want that? Do you want to be well? Or are we okay just being moved along and not really noticing what's going on around us and not, not uh, seeing a more vivid world? I just resisted two services in a row and making up a word. I will use it later today with Donna Jo. It's not a bad word, it's just made-up word. Um, anyway, if God's ways are far beyond anything that you and I can imagine, and if he wants something so good for you and for me that we can't even begin to, to dream of, to dream of, We should want that. Sometimes, for whatever reason, either we think we don't deserve the greatness of God, or we, we're so used to the hammer dropping that we just figured, you know, our dread takes over, and we're waiting for the next thing to happen. God has better than that for you. Way better than that. Or, how about things are are going along on an even keel and it's going well enough that oh, I forgot to forgot to pray. I forgot to read my Bible. You see, quite often we hear people um, say, you know, well, I still need prayer. Things are going well, but I still need prayer because this isn't right. Well, news, ladies and gentlemen, we need prayer all the time. And if we're only praying to get to that point, okay, whew, everything's good now. You all can quit praying. That doesn't sound like anywhere I'd want to be. My thoughts are completely different from yours. My ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Do you want to be well? You notice Jesus didn't say, do you want to get up and walk with a limp? If that's, if that's the case, that's okay. But this isn't about our, our physical state. It's about our spiritual state. Our relationship with God and with each other. Jesus didn't say, do you want to just walk today and then you can lay back down tomorrow so you see what it's like. You can go get your errands done. Sorry, but there's thoughts going through my head where Jesus could have just like pushed him up to the side. There's all kinds of things he could have done. Here, let me push you in front of the other ones. Here, let me stop the line. Here, let me just throw you in. Or he could have just turned away and said, if you wanted to be well, you would have moved sometime in the last 38 years. I give up on you. But God doesn't do that. You know, he doesn't give up on us. He doesn't give up on our family, our friends, our neighbors, our enemies. He loves you today, and he wants to make you well. And he wants to make you even weller than you already are there, just a little bit. I don't know about 
love you, but I would like to be weller. Yes? yes? More well. I would like to be more well. I know that's a proper term, Joe. <laughs> but I'd still like to be weller, too, because it just sounds like something that would be fun to be. Rather than each day getting worse, each day with the Lord is intended to get better. Yeah. Even in the midst of trials. Yeah. Even in the midst of this whole crazy world that we're living in. In fact, I believe that coming through the other side is going to be way better than anything we've experienced before. And the only reason I can say that, because it sounds just straight up crazy coming out of my mouth, but the only reason I can say that is because of my faith, and I hope your faith and your trust in the Lord. Amen. This isn't going to be the same as it was. This world's never going to be the same. Our country is never going to be the same. But that's okay. That's okay. Lord, I thank you for your word. And I we just ask you to help us to focus our eyes on you, either all day today or at some point today. And let us notice what you would have us notice. And Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us to want to be more well. And I pray for your blessing on the lives of your sons and your daughters. We ask your blessing on our community, on our families, on our church. And, it, and I say church as the entire body of Christ. Lord, I pray for our country today, for those in it. And I pray that your will would be accomplished in the midst of chaos, in the midst of fear, in the midst of anger. In the midst of foolishness, I thank you, God, that you never change. So we look forward to what you have. I ask you, Lord, to work in the hearts and the minds of those that we have elected to represent us in the United States of America. And I pray, God, that you would... This is a mountain. Lord, I ask you to remove the division and create unity so that we can once again, well, maybe for the first time, begin to function according to what you would have us function. Beyond that, Lord, I just pray that you would give us peace of mind and confidence in you and in the steps you have planned for us. I ask you to be with all those who are suffering, all those who are mourning today. Let your presence be known. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the way that you love us. I thank you for the fact that you are just and fair. Lord, I ask that you would help us to want to be well. And that you would help keep us from sin. So that we may not experience something even worse. Lord, I ask that if it's something that is so near and familiar to us that, that we aren't sure if we really want to get rid of it, that you would speak clearly to our hearts and minds and show each one something better. Something better than what we are capable of. Help us to reach out to you. Help us to receive from you. And Lord, we, we thank you for the way you care so much about us. You sent your own son. You love us so much that you did that. You were willing to die on a cross. You love us so much that, that, that we have your, your word alive and relevant today. And you love us so much that if we accept Christ as our Savior, Holy Spirit, you reside within us. So Lord, I ask you to make us and shape us and mold us into the temple that you call us to be, a temple where you reside in each one of us. I thank you for that. Thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for uh, doing church here at Honeyville, and uh, be blessed. Have a good week.